All right, we're planting a new tree here at the farm. And this is a sun glow nectarine. This is exciting for me because we do not have a yellow flesh nectarine on the farm. So I'm excited. Fair's excited. Hopefully, if everything goes as planned, we will be eating delicious yellow fleshed nectarines in say three years. All right, so we have the sun glow nectarine right where I generally want it. It's a little close to the driveway, but I'm trying to cheat it away from the underground sand mound that's behind us. I really shouldn't even plant it this close to the underground sand mound, but I'm running out of places to put my fruit trees. So once we get it in the general area, like everybody knows, we want to dig the hole two to three times bigger than the pot size. So we're going to make a nice cutout of where we want it. And like I always say, do not plant the tree too deep. All right, I thought I'd show you guys how I like to do this. Once I get the cutout the way I want it, I will take the grass portions, cut them out, flip them over, and turn them around so that I can start building it up. I am making my tree ring and ultimately making my saucer that is gonna collect water throughout the year. See a lot of people throw these grass clumps away, but I like to use them. Once we get all the grass clumps out, we are going to loosen up the soil as much as we possibly can and then take a little bit out so that we can leave the crown and the, the root flare at the perfect height. We do not want to bury the root flare. We can see right here, obviously this tree's grafted so we want to plant it high. We want to find the roots. And we're going to put this three to four inches above the ground. Okay, after we get the hole about the step we want it, we are going to have to get this tree out of the five gallon pot it's been growing in for a long time and if it's been in here long enough it's going to be root bound so it's extremely important to make sure it's not root bound when we plant it these roots will only ever want to grow in the same direction since they've been in this pot but we want them to spread out they can actually choke themselves out over time so we're going to come in here and roughen up the root ball significantly more than you think you should Sometimes I'll even come down the sides and make sure there's no roots wrapping around. Our tree's going to do much better now. This is what we want.
because this tree came in a five gallon pot, which sometimes you can't get because there's a lot of online nurseries that won't ship in a five gallon pot. But because it's in a five gallon pot, it has a big root system and therefore we can add soil enhancer and a little bit of a organic fertilizer. I have chicken manure in here, which is like a three, three, three. And I'm gonna spread it around the dirt that we are gonna backfill the hole with. This is something I would not recommend doing with a bare root or a quart size or any real small tree. For example, if you go back and watch my pluot planting video, you will see that I didn't add anything to the soil. Right, the, the next step is to pack the soil as we backfill it. Um, like I showed in the other video, pack, 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 pack. Very important. Stops this tree from settling in any direction. It will not stop the roots, so you don't need to worry about that. And because we planted the tree high like I like, you're going to need more soil. You can get it from the woods. You can get it from Home Depot here, but we're gonna pack this in in layers, mix some of the garden soil with the original soil and build it up and then put a nice saucer around it. As we pack it, we want to periodically get up, make sure it's not leaning in any direction, left or right. And then once where we have it pretty close, we continue packing. Okay, second to last step, we're gonna mulch it, but like I said before, we are not covering the root flare. We want to see this root flare for the next 15 years. So if you have someone else come in in the springtime and put mulch down on your trees or anything, just make sure you get out there and check and pull it back. It's very important that we don't bury the neck of the tree. like to put a saucer higher on the edges so that when I go to water it all flows down to the roots right where I want it to go and it doesn't just run off so when I'm finished it'll look something like this before I put the fence on So you spent the money, you bought the fruit tree, you spent the time, you planted the fruit tree, but just as important as those first two steps is protecting it. And there's lots of different ways to do this. This is the way I like to do it. Okay, so we're basically done. But because the tree's so tall and we planted it high, we're gonna have to stop it from moving all around and we do that simply with a piece of wire and some garden hose this is so the wire doesn't cut into the tree we'll I'll leave this on for probably a year two years and then the tree will sufficiently have rooted itself and then you can take it off. If you 
finished planting the tree and it wasn't as straight as you hoped after packing it, you can also use these wires to straighten it in any direction that you want.